Welcome to MathsMaster.org. We're going to have a look at the graph transformation y equals f of open bracket a times x close bracket of the function f of x. So with this graph transformation we take a function of x and we multiply a number which I'll use the letter a to stand for by x but we multiply it before we then go and evaluate the function. So if you like, we multiply the input to the function, the x, by the number a before we then go and use that to evaluate the function. So we will be looking at two functions of x. The first one is sine x and when we apply this graph transformation to it we'll be looking at the function sine of open bracket ax close bracket. You'll notice that I've put the ax in brackets to clearly show that we will be multiplying the x by a before we then go and find the sine of that value. The second function we'll look at is x squared and so after applying this graph transformation we'll be looking at the graph of open bracket a times x close bracket all squared. And again, you can see that I've put the ax in brackets to clearly show that we'll multiply the x by a before we then go on and square it. So to get started, let's have a look at this graph transformation's effect on the function sine x. OK, so here is our starting function, y equals sine x, or y equals sine of 1 times x. And you can see that I've got the equation of the function here, and I've also got a slider which allows me to change the value of a. It changes the uh, coefficient that we're multiplying x by, the number that we're multiplying x by, before we then find the sine of that value. So let's have a look at what happens if we change this value a. If I make a bigger, this is what happens to the graph. So this is now the function of y equals sine of 4x. <clears throat> Go back to where we started. If I make a smaller now, so this is the graph of y equals sine of a half x. And if I make uh, a equal to 0 now, sine of 0x. And then if I make a negative, here's what happens to the graph. OK, so let's try and generalise what we've seen here. Here's our starting function. Let's have a look at what happens if we increase a again. So the graph seems to be being stretched, or compressed really, along the x-axis. So in the direction of the x-axis, the graph is being squashed or stretched. OK. So what, how do we actually know how much the graph is being stretched? Well, let's have a look. Uh, have a look at the point where the graph goes through uh, the x-axis. Uh, it goes through the x-axis um, where x is equal to 0 at the origin, where x is equal to 180 in the middle of the graph, and x is equal to 360. <coughs> let's just focus on the point at the centre of the graph uh, where the graph goes through the x-axis when x is equal to 180 degrees. Let's have a look at what happens if I double the value of a. Now that same point has moved from 180 degrees to 90 degrees now. So as I've doubled the value of a it seems as though the, uh, that coordinate has, uh, the x part of that coordinate has sh uh, been shrunk by a half. Uh, so if I double the value of a, the x coordinate is halved. Watch that same point as I go to a equals 3. Okay, so the point that was originally at 180 degrees is now at 60 degrees. So as a is equal uh, to 3, that point is now a third of the distance along the graph that it was previously. 
So the scale factor, and this is the trickiest one that you have to remember for all the graph transformations, the scale factor is actually 1 divided by a, or 1 over a. So in the case of in the case, we'll go through this again, um, in the case of the point um, 180, 0, so this point where the x uh, axis is crossed by the graph at 180 degrees, if we were to look now at the function y is equal to sine of 3x, so we'd make a equal to 3, the scaling factor is 1 divided by 3, or 1 over 3, a third. So rather than 180 degrees, being where the graph crosses the point there, uh, I'd expect it to be a third of that, so 60 degrees, which is what we saw, and we'll just do it again to show you that that's what happens. So the real big message of this, and it is quite a tricky one to get your head around, is that the scaling factor is 1 divided by a, or 1 over a. Okay, let's have a look now at what happens if we look at the graph of y equals sine of 0.5x or y is equal to 0, uh, y is equal to sine of a half x. Well, the scaling factor will be 1 divided by a half, which if you check it, is equal to 2. Okay, so we're expecting the scaling factor to be 2. So all of the points on the graph, you take the x-coordinate and we'll double them. So let's have a look at the peak of the graph. The peak of the graph is at the point 90, 1. That's the peak of the graph, uh, which is currently at 90 degrees. If we're ex expecting our scaling factor to be 2, then that point should move to 180 degrees, as it does. So just to recap, we're looking at the graph of y equals sine of a half x. So the scaling factor is going to be 1 divided by a half, which is 2. So the x coordinates of all the points on the graph get stretched uh, to be double what they were previously. The y coordinates of all the points on the graph don't change. OK. If a is equal to 0, then we're looking at uh, y is equal to sine of 0 times x, or 0 times anything is 0. So we always get the value where sine um, of x is equal to 0. Well, sine of 0 is 0. So when we have sine of 0x, all the points are equal to 0. OK. Finally, to finish off, let's have a look at what happens when the graph, um, when we have a negative number for the value of a. <clears throat> so here's the graph of y equals sine of 1 times x. Here is the graph of y equals sine of minus 1 times x. Now, you do need to have a bit of a knowledge of what happens either side of uh, the origin on a sine graph. To, to understand this. Uh, but basically what's happened is that the graph has been reflected in the y-axis. Now I know you can see in this case it's also been reflected in the x-axis as well and that's just a special case for this function. But the message that I want to get across is that if we look at um, a graph where we take a positive value for a in this graph transformation, in this case y equals sine of 2x. If we look at the graph of y equals sine of minus 2x, that that's exactly the same graph transformation that we had for y of sine of 2x, but it's been reflected in the y-axis. OK, let's go over those main key points again about what this graph transformation uh, does by looking at another function. So we'll look at the function now, x squared. OK, so here's our graph of y equals x squared, or y equals 1 times x, all squared. 
Uh, again, you can see that I've got the equation of the graph down the left hand corner and I've also got a slider where I can change the value of A. Right, exactly the same process happens before. So as we change the value of A, the graph gets uh, stretched along the x-axis or in the direction of the x-axis. And I just want to show exactly the same principles as what we've just looked at, but on this graph. So let's start with the point uh, where x is equal to 4, y is equal to 16. So have a look at the point 4, 16 on the graph. OK, if we change the value of a from 1 to being 2, so a is now 2, the scaling factor is 1 divided by a, 1 divided by 2, uh, which is a half. So I'd expect the x-coordinate to be halved. So we go from the point where x is equal to 4, y is 16. That should translate to the point uh, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 16. The x-coordinate should be halved if we make a equal to 2. And lo and behold, it does. It works. OK, let's go back to where we started. Look at that same point, x is 4, y is 16. Now say we change a to be equal to 4. The scaling factor will be 1 divided by 4, or a quarter. So the x-coordinate should be a quarter of what it is previously. Currently, the x-coordinate is 4. So I, a quarter of 4 is 1. So I would, should expect that point to be uh, to be stretched uh, to move to the point 1 16 rather than 4 16 because the x coordinate should be a quarter let's have a look at what happens so there we go exactly as we expected that point is now at 1 16 rather than 4 16 okay same as before if a is equal to 0 we do 0 times x well, anything times 0 is 0. 0 squared is still 0, so for all values of x that you could put in there, the y value would be equal to 0. And then this shows quite nicely what happens if x uh, goes negative. And I think uh, the reflection in the y-axis is better shown on this x squared graph than it was on the uh, sine x graph. So here's y is equal to 1 times x, all squared. Here is y is equal to minus 1 times x, all squared. And you can see that it looks exactly the same. Um, and what has actually happened is it looks it, it, it is a slight uh, illusion really because all of the uh, points to the right of the y-axis are now on the left uh, hand side of the y-axis it has reflected through the y-axis but obviously because of the symmetrical nature of the x squared graph uh, the the reflection in the y-axis looks exactly the same um, as itself. So if we started at y is equal to 2x all squared, the graph of y equals to minus 2x all squared, but it looks the same, but it has actually been reflected in the y-axis. Okay, so just to recap, we've looked at the graph transformation y is equal to f of open bracket ax close bracket, and we found that this uh, stretches the graph in the direction of the x-axis and we need to scale all the x-coordinates of that graph by the scale factor 1 divided by a, 1 over a. If a is negative the graph is reflected in the y-axis so it works exactly the same as though a was positive you have the same scale factor but then you need to reflect the graph in the y-axis that was the graph transformation y is equal to f of open bracket ax close bracket of the function f of x. If you want to see some more fantastic maths videos, please visit mathsmaster.org.